Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. Hope you're all good. Hope you're all well. We've already recorded today's podcast, which you can of course find on the channel and you can find on all your favorite audio platforms. But there's a story that's doing the rounds this afternoon that I thought was certainly worth discussing. And it's with regards to the reported interest that Arsenal have in the Napoli centre forward, Victor Osimhen. We've talked about him quite a bit over the summer so far. We've talked about the price tag. We've talked about the release clause, the fact that I think that's a little bit over the top and that I don't expect Arsenal to go anywhere near that in terms of what they'd be willing to pay for Victor Osimhen. And so the deal looks to me like something that's very, very unlikely to go through and very, very unlikely to happen. However, a journalist from Rai, which is the Italian state broadcaster, goes by the name of Ciro Venerato, claims Arsenal will make an attempt to sign the Napoli striker, Victor Osimhen, in the coming days. The Nigerian doesn't want to go to Saudi Arabia, according to this report. But the problem for him is that Arsenal do not value him at anywhere near the release clause amount, which is 120 million euros. According to this report, Arsenal are said to value him at just over half of that, which is around about 75 million euros, which translates or converts to 63 million pounds. Now, it's hard to believe that somebody with Aurelio De Laurentiis's reputation would allow a key player, an asset of the worth of Victor Osimhen to leave at half the release clause, right? But the situation at Napoli is quite complex at this moment in time. We know they won the Scudetto under Spalletti. He then walked away. He's now in charge of the Italian national team at the Euros. And so far, he's doing a really, really good job. However, since losing him, they were never really able to replicate the form that they showed under him. And they've now turned to Antonio Conte, uh, of course, known for his time here in the Premier League with both Chelsea and Tottenham Hotspur, to try and put Napoli back on the straight and narrow and try and get them back into a place where they're competing for the Champions League spots again. Now, Antonio Conte, according to reports from Italy, simply doesn't fancy Victor Osimhen. He doesn't see him as somebody that he wants to build around. He doesn't see him as the right man to lead his line. In fact, he's being linked uh, with a move for Romelu Lukaku again this summer. Antonio Conte and Romelu Lukaku, two people that seem to work incredibly well together. But in order for Napoli to do that and other business, of course, in order for them to build the team that Antonio Conte wants and needs to be successful, they're going to have to raise some money this summer. And Victor Osimhen is one of the players that they could potentially raise money from. It's going to be interesting because I think it's going to be a summer of real change in Naples because uh, Kvarat Scalia's agent came out yesterday and said that he um, would want his client to move on, uh, that they want him to play somewhere where he knows who the coach is going to be, where he's playing UEFA Champions League football. So both of those two players who were pivotal and key in Napoli's rise and then them getting over the line to win the Scudetto, the first since the Diego Maradona days. You know, those two players could be on the move and those two players could see Napoli raise significant funds from which Antonio Conte can then move on and build the team that he wants. Now, Antonio Conte, particularly in Italy, has always been successful. I don't think there's any question around whether Aurelio De Laurentiis should trust him or not. But can he raise the funds to give Antonio Conte what he needs? Well, if he sells Victor Osimhen, that would go a long way. If we have a quick look at Victor Osimhen's statistics over the last few years, we're talking about someone who, in um, the season that's just finished, managed 15 league goals in 25 appearances and two goals in the UEFA Champions League. Not his best season. His best season was the 22-23 campaign. I referenced that one again because that's when Napoli went on to be champions. 26 goals in 32 league appearances that season. And in the season prior, 14 in 27, which isn't bad either. He's a proven goal scorer. He is one of the best centre forwards in world football right now. Um, is his stock as high as it was 18 months ago? No, it's not. I'd be lying if I said it was. And if it was, Arsenal certainly wouldn't be, according to this report, going in and trying to do a deal at around about half of the value of the release clause. Arsenal clearly feel that Napoli have a real need to move the player on. Arsenal clearly feel, if this is to be believed, of course, I've always got a caveat that with this, that, you know, 
that he would be a good addition to their side, but they know what they think he's worth and they know what their ceiling is in terms of what they're going to pay. I would say that they probably don't believe that at £63 million they're going to get this deal done, or the equivalent of. I'm sure that they're aware that they will probably have to go a little bit higher to do that deal. But it feels like a good starting point for negotiations if indeed these negotiations are going to take place and are going to proceed. Every time we talk about Victor Osimhen, I keep saying unrealistic, unrealistic. It isn't going to happen. And I'm not saying that this report has changed my mind. But this is a report that comes from somebody a lot more reputable than some of the websites that we're normally crediting a lot of these Italian-based stories with. So I'm not saying I'm optimistic that we're going to get him. I'm not at that stage yet. But I do take this report a little bit more seriously. And it is why I felt that despite having already recorded today's pod, that I should probably jump on and talk about this. Is he the right fit for Arsenal? Um, again, you know, we've got loads of these scouting report videos up our sleeves. As and when things progress with players, we will sit down and we will do them. But just based on what I know currently about Victor Osimhen, do I think that he'd fit into this Arsenal team? I think he's physical enough um, to lead the line for you. I think he's quick enough in behind to give you that option as well. Do I think he's as good a hold-up player as Kai Havertz? No, I don't. I think he's a much more clinical finisher, though. And I also think um, that with somebody like Victor Osimhen, uh, you know, you you can vary things up and play in a slightly different way. Where he kind of stands out ahead of the likes of Benjamin Sesko, for example, for me, is that he has far more involvement in football matches outside of just scoring goals. And as I mentioned on the last episode of the podcast, watching Sesko for Slovenia, yes, he comes alive when the ball drops to his feet. Yes, he comes alive in those areas. And yes, sometimes he's occupying defenders, which at times can be enough to create room and space for others. I think Victor Osimen is a far more well-rounded forward player today than Benjamin Sesko is. Now, if you were to get Victor Osimhen for this figure that's being quoted, around about 75 million euros, which, as I say, is around about 63 million pounds based on the quick conversion I've just done online, then actually that feels like good value. If you were going to pay close to that for Benjamin Sesco, who's still on the development path, yes, has good potential and probably goes on for longer. But Victor Osimhen is there already. He's already regarded as one of the best strikers in Serie A, has been for two or three seasons now, has been on the radar of a lot of clubs. Um, and obviously, circumstances dictate now that Napoli could be willing to let him go for a lot less than that release clause, which is in place, of course, to protect them. Sometimes you have to go into a summer with very clear plans and you have to execute those plans and be careful not to veer away from what it is that you're building and the path that you need to go on to get to that destination. But equally, you also sometimes need to be able to pivot and need to be able to be reactive to the market and to circumstances that may arise that allow you to get a player at a cut price deal like this. You know, Benjamin Sesco was obviously someone that Arsenal liked. It was obviously someone that Arsenal inquired about. They went to do that. They tried to do that. They spoke to the players' camp and they were told that he was going to stay at RB Leipzig. It's since been announced that he's signed a new contract. So we didn't land Benjamin Sesco through no fault of anybody's. That's his decision. He wants to stay at the club. No problem, no drama. We knew what the release clause was. If we got the agreement from the player, we could have gone ahead and triggered that and not had any issues with RB Leipzig. That deal hasn't happened. Perhaps Victor Osman wasn't the number one going into the summer. Perhaps he still isn't. Perhaps this deal is just simply not going to happen. But listening to these reports and reading these reports coming out of Italy, it does feel like if he is available on the cheap, partly because Napoli are desperate to raise money and he doesn't want to go to Saudi, and partly just because under Antonio Conte, they're going to go in a different direction, then Arsenal should be having had a long-standing interest in this player from what we understand. He's always been someone that's on our radar, even from his days in French football. Then we should explore the possibility of doing this deal. Obviously, we want to get the best deal for ourselves. Um, every single football club does. But yeah, I think this would be a really interesting piece of business. At 120 million, which was what we were talking about a few days ago in terms of the release clause, I'm not interested for a second. But I'll tell you what, at 60 odd million pounds, I'm interested. And I think this is one that Arsenal should certainly 
look into. Let me know your thoughts in the comments. Would you have Victor Osimena at Arsenal? What's the absolute maximum that you would pay for the Nigerian? Get involved in the comments. Let me know. Leave a like on the video and all the rest of it. And I'll see you on the next one. Cheers.